Hello, 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 guys. Welcome, welcome. I tell you what, after the um, intro, I'm excited. My goodness, we got so much going on at TCTC for the month of August. Uh, we are doing a series all month focused on the family or family focused. And so this month we have... Um, a lot. We have um, tonight, I will be kicking off the uh, first teaching tonight, and I'm going to be talking about the word focus. And then on this coming Friday, we're going to CC's Pizza, and uh, we're treating the kids of TCTC for pizza night. And um, Saturday, we have a, a party in the park with Pastor Sean. Um, with the game truck and, and food truck and 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 we got uh, panelists uh, panels on the 10th and on the 17th and um, with um, therapists and pastors and educators and so I'm telling you you do not want to miss what's going on this month um I'm excited about what the Lord is doing even in the just the intro the broadcast the 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 um opening up of Bible study. So much is changing. So many things are happening and we want you to be a part of those great things. And so I want to always remind you that you are welcome to join us at the Church Teaching Center, 141 4 Avenue, Columbia, South Carolina, 29229, where services start at 12 noon. So we would love to see your face. We would love to visit you visit you to visit us and just for us to share um, a hug, a greeting, a fist bump or whatever. But I want to say tonight, welcome, welcome. So I'm going to open up in prayer and I want to thank um, Deacon Cliff, who's running um, the show from behind the scenes. I want to thank him. And so all that you see is going on. He is at, at absolutely doing a fabulous job. And so um, if you're on tonight, I want to ask you to share the broadcast, like the page, follow us, like us on YouTube, visit our website, um, join us in some capacity. Let us know that you have been a part of the word today. Let us know that the word blessed you, things you may want to see, questions you have for the panelists um, that's coming up this month, things you know that's burning your heart so we can find out answers. There's no need coming to Bible study, to church and leaving and not know. And if we don't know, We'll pray and we'll ask Bishop, whatever we need to do to try to help you find out the answers that's burning in your heart. So let's go into a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. Father, we thank you for what you are doing at TCTC. We thank you for what you're doing in this land and country. We thank you, Lord God, for your spirit that you're pouring out upon all flesh. We thank you, Lord God, that even in this month as we are focusing on families, focusing on helping to build stronger families, rebuild families that may have been broken. Lord God, to restructure, reconnect, redo some things that may, Lord God, we may have messed up or do some things that we have left undone. And Father, I pray tonight that your word comes forth with clarity, with boldness. And Lord God, even with the spirit of correction that we may come to be all that you have called us to be. We thank you for being Jehovah Jireh, the one that always provides. We thank you, Father, for being Jehovah Rapha, the healer. Jehovah Nisi, our victory, our banner. Lord God, in all things, we have victory. We overcome, Lord God, reminded that we are enough. We are overcomers. We are conquerors. So, Father, tonight I pray for families everywhere. We pray for fathers, that they be encouraged and strengthened. I pray for mothers, Lord God, that you continue to, Lord God, give us wisdom of how to support our family. I pray for our children, that they'll come to know you in a greater way, that their hearts become sold out to you and that their relationships are not based on what mom and dad knows, but their relationship is based on who they are in Jesus Christ. So Father, I thank you now. And Father God, we bless the name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. So I want to thank you all. So tonight um, we are talking about focus. So I want to I wanted to kick the series off because we're saying that we're focusing on the family. We're family focused. I wanted to um, build on that word focus. And what does 
focus really means. And so we're going to Philippians um, chapter three, and we're going to read, start with verse 10, and we're going to go through verse 13. And we're going to just briefly um, stay here for a minute, and then we're going to read it from the King James Version. And verse 10 says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made comfortable unto death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. 12, not as I already attained, either was were ready perfect, but I follow after and that I may apprehend that for which I also am apprehended. Verse 13, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forth unto the things which are before me. And where I want us to stop right here is that, but this one thing I do, one thing I do, this one thing. And so when I think about one thing, I think about focus. I think about him saying that this one thing that I do, um, I count not myself apprehended, but this one thing. And so when I was talking and Deacon Cliff and I was talking about the message and what was coming tonight, um, focus on the family. And so one thing that I believe that we need to get back to is focusing on what really matters. And I know, yes, first God, but people have lost focus of family. We've become focused on so many things. And sometimes our, our spouse and our children are left to their own devices. And so we find ourselves focused on work. We find ourselves focused on our hobbies. We find ourselves focused on ourselves. We find ourselves focused on getting more stuff and more things. And so, so our focus is all over the place. But he said, but this one thing. And so what I am challenging us tonight is to focus on the one thing. Because as we focus on God and we're following his word, it's going to cause us to focus on our family. It's going to cause us to set eyes on what our spouse needs, what our children need, you know, what we should be doing, how we should be handling those things. And, and so when we are focused on 50, you know, 50 different things, like you're not sync, you, your, your mind is all over the place and, and you're here, there and yonder. But he says that this one thing, I forget those things which are behind me and I reach forth to those things which are before me. And I want to say that sometimes we get caught up on the, on the areas that we may have failed or on the areas of weakness or whatever. But here it is, I'm forgetting those things. And this one thing, I'm focused, I'm focused on God because as I seek God and I seek the things of God, He's going to give me wisdom for my family. He's going to give me wisdom for the things that I need on my job. He's going to, he's going to cause me to be able to focus just on him. And as I focus on him, he's going to give me the, the, the path to go and what, and what in which I need to go. And so some of us are not following God. And so we're, we're jumping over here and we're jumping over there and we're jumping. And our spouses and our children are suffering because we're out of focus. We were talking, um, Deacon Cliff and I were talking about when we go to the eye doctor and my eyes are really bad. I can see close, but I can't see anything far away and how they're, they're, they're turning the little things and asking you which one looks best. But, and sometimes you can't tell the difference because you, you'll just say one so they can, but when it's really out of sync, when it's really out of focus, it's really blurry. You can't catch, you can't see anything. And that's how some of us are walking around when it comes to our family that they're, they're blurry. They become out of sync. We don't know what our children are doing. We don't know what our spouse needs. We don't know what's going on because we are out of focus with God. And so when you're out of focus with God, you can't hear what he's telling you that your children, that's why so much is going on because our children are not getting what they need because the parents are out of focus. And so what I want to do tonight is bring our focus, bring it back. And so and the thing about it is the thing that you're focused on 
It's the place that your energy or your direction is going, you're going to flow. So that's where your attention is. So if your energy or if your focus is about work, when you get home, if you have not left work at work, when you get home, that's where your energy is going to flow about that project, about that meeting, about whatever. And so your children may be running around you and you may be in the house, but you're not really there. And so, and we were also talking about the time to sit at the table, pray together, talk. Is the only time that our children see us worship or talk to God is when we're at church? Are we not sharing the word of God? Are we not allowing them to pray with us, pray for us? Is the only time they think God show up or our spouse is when we're at church, when we're at the altar? Because that may be a little confusion to them because the same God that we cry out and call out to at the altar on Sunday or Wednesday, is he not the same God that we should be calling out and praying out to in our household when things are going on, when things are happening? And so I wanted to share that, but I, I wanted to look at it because when we see it, for for what it really is and i had to really just look at myself my children are grown and gone but even when they come to visit what are they seeing you know what are they hearing and so we gotta we gotta take an account because we want to say we took them to church but did we bring you took them to church and they heard bishop pray or pastor pray. They heard deacon pray. They heard sisters sing. They had, but, but, but what did they experience from the one, the most important, the one that they're with, the ones that they're with, mother, father, or whomever, grandmother, whoever. I took them to church, but I took them to church, but what did they experience at home? Did we bring God in our homes? that God may be in their hearts. And so let's go over to Matthew 14 and I'm going to read verse 28 and 33 because I want to go in a little more on focus. And I want to talk about Peter a little bit. The scripture we're going to is Matthew 14, 28, 33 if somebody will put it in the chat for us. Matthew 14, starting with verse 28 through 33. And it says, and Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand took hold of him saying, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshiped him saying, truly, you are the son of God. And so the, the thing that caught my eye as I read this, he said he saw the wind. So he was going to Jesus, but he saw the wind. And so what that made me think about was focus is a thing that you're paying attention to or selective attention or the thing you choose to look at. And so he was looking at Jesus, but then he saw the wind. And when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And so here he is walking to Jesus. Jesus walked on water and so did Peter, but he's walking. And so when he said, if it's you, Lord, bid me to come. And so I think about this as a witness of Christ, just maybe seeing him walking on water like, mm, this is, this. I don't know what this is. But the people did not look at that he walked on water. They looked at that he began to sink. And so what I want to say to us is that that's what happens in life. People, you know, the great things you do are sometimes overlooked. But that's not what I'm going to talk about. My What I'm going to talk about tonight is, is the focus. Like, he was focused on Jesus. And I believe that as, as, as parents, as siblings, as grandparents, 
Because whomever you are, put, put your title on it, right? You got to keep your focus on him no matter what. He saw the wind and he became afraid. Many families are sinking because we are not focused. Many children are sinking because parents are not focused. Many adult children are struggling because they were raised with unfocused parents that focused on things other than God. So they may have been focused, but they wasn't focused on the word of God. They were not focused on bringing their children up in the admonition of Christ. They were not focused on bringing their children up in a way that Christ had directed and so because we became out of focus with the things that we wanted the things of this world became becoming caught up like demons we talked about on sunday with the things of this present world they lost focus and so their focus is on doing more getting more seeing more being more and not saying that anything's wrong with more but it is when it calls you to be out of sync with god when it causes you to lose time with your children when it causes you to lose time with your spouse when it it causes you to lose time with family members that really matter. And so we begin to look at everything and everybody. But Jesus is the one with the answer. I promise you, you can watch Oprah all day. You can listen to Steve Harvey early in the morning, late at night. You can see Dr. Phil right at right after work. You can watch all the Instagram, Instagram and, and, and TikTok and Facebook influencers. But I promise you, they don't have the answer for your situation. The answer for your situation is in Jesus. And so what I found in this text is that Peter's biggest problem was that he lost focus. He looked at the wind. So I ask you tonight, what are you looking at? If you found yourself out of focus, out of sync, what are you looking at? What do you spend most of your time what, what's your focus on? Because where your focus is, that's where your energy is also. And so he saw what was coming and he allowed what was coming other than the one that you see, he, he saw the wind, he saw it coming. But if he had kept his eyes on Jesus, the wind ceased, obeyed the voice of God. So all he had to do was keep his eyes on Jesus. And so he allowed what he saw to cause him to be afraid. Some of us have been paralyzed in our parental duties. Catch this, in our parental duties, because of things that have happened in the past. And as we just read in Philippians, you know, I press toward, I move, forgetting those things that are behind me and pressing to, to, to those things that are before me. And that's why with the with the teaching um, this in this month that we are bringing in educators and pastors and therapists because some people may be paralyzed they cannot get focused they cannot um see past what happened or what they didn't get and they may need to be resynced um they may need like i go to the doctor to get new glasses every year and the ones that work the year prior may need a little more medicine may need to be a little stronger because my eyes have gotten a little weaker and so people may have have gotten a little weaker but what i'm saying is that we're bringing in people because you may need more and what we want you to do we want you to get free so that you can focus on the things of god because you will have storms you will deal with struggles your marriage may face rainy days there's going to come times that your children have issues your job has problems there's going to be career hiccups and business mistakes but one thing i want you to, to know tonight that your mind has to remain clear you have to be focused when you're in a storm you cannot focus on the storm you have to focus on the one that will cause the storm to see the enemy wants to destroy you when because you're out of focus and so the enemy wants to get you out of focus and when you're out of focus you can't see remember i said things begin to get blurry and when things are blurry you can't move forward to do the things of god and so the thing that i like most about the story in the bible is when jesus commands peter to come although it was crazy now i believe peter might have you know if we read about peter he he was flat the mouth so he did things so he said lord if it's you bid me to come i don't think he thought jesus was gonna tell him to come 
But Jesus said, okay, come on. And so when Jesus said, come on, he obeyed. Catch that. He obeyed. Even how crazy it was. How many of us, when God is telling us to do stuff and to say things and to be places and, and whatever it is for our marriages, for our families, for our community, it sounds crazy. It don't seem like it'll ever work. It don't seem like it'll happen. How many of us obey? Because see, the miracle was in the obedience. It wasn't about him beginning to sink. It was in the obedience. And so I want to ask you tonight, what are some commands that you hold true that God has given you for your children, for your spouse, for your household, for your ministry? What has God given you? Because I'm going to tell you something. If you don't know what God promised you and what he promised your children and your children's children, the enemy got you out of focus. Because as long as you don't know what God has given you, how are you going to get what he promised you? And so one thing, scripture, my, my mom used to love to tell us, um, honor your mother and father, that you, your days will be long upon this earth. That's one of the commands that God gave us. But first he said, honor your mother and father. And then he said, so that, this was the promise, that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. So when you honor children, adult children, your mother and father, you're going to live long in the land that the Lord is giving you. So there's a promise that when you honor them, I'm giving you them. I'm giving you land. I'm giving you stuff. I'm giving you position, but we are so busy trying to get, we're not waiting for God to give. And that's why we're out of focus. That's why we're working 90 hours a week. That's why we're doing, we don't, we don't have time to sit at the dinner table with our children. That's why we're not having time to pour the word into them and guard them and guide them because we missed the, 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 the we got the command maybe, but we missed the promise in the land that the Lord is giving you. So what I got from this is that if I am obedient, the Lord is blessing. The Lord is giving. Ephesians 6, 6 and 4 said, you obey him. Jesus and, and uh, Ephesians 6 and 4. I'm sorry. I thought I had put the scripture in your mouth. One second. So, so here it is. I wanted to just say this because, because I found myself, of course, it says, and you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. But listen, but bring them up in the nurture, in the admonition of the Lord. Bring them up. Ye father, that's what he told daddies. Y'all bring them up in the admonition of God. Give them the word. Teach them the word. Pray for them. You may have to discipline them too, but you got to pray. You got to give them the word. You can't expect for them to come to church on Sunday, hear somebody preach a word, and then they're able to apply the word. No, it has to be pressure applied to the word daily that they may rise up and the Bible said they'll rise up and call their mother blessed. Proverbs 10 and 1 says, A wise son brings joy to his father, but a foolish son brings grief to his mother. When I read that, I said, wow, a wise son brings joy. Daddy going to brag on my boys doing this, my boy. But a foolish son, a hurt mama, when, I, when, I, when a son gets in trouble, um, um, go to jail, um, um, disobey or, or whatever it may be it brings hurt it brings pain to mother right but it's a and the reason i looked at that because i said wow it says a foolish son brings grief because i believe the women as nurturers when 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 when, when our children get in trouble we're grieving we're hurting and so that's why it's so important and I'm not saying because they know the word and whatever that, that, that they're not going to fall away or they're not going to get in trouble or things not going to happen. No. But what I am saying is that when their backs are against the wall and when all in all has been done and there's nothing else, they know who they can call on. They know that they can refocus, resync. They know that they can redirect because I heard a word. I heard my daddy say at the table, if I call on the name of Jesus, he'll answer. I heard my mama say in prayer, if I'll just repent, 
turn from my wicked ways, then God will hear me. God will deliver me. And so children will have something to go back on. But if you ain't never taught them nothing, if they ain't never heard nothing, and the only thing they got is what the pastor said or what the bishop said, they may take it. But when mama said something, when grandmama said something, I heard grandmama say, boy, you better, you better be careful of the company that you hang around. You better be careful of the people that you associate with. And so when people are doing something wrong, they can hear grandmama say, uh-uh, that ain't the kind. My grandma said I need to be hanging around because bad character corrupts of the company, right? And so here it is, y'all. It's got to happen in the home. The church will hear, but we can't do it all. It has to start with parents holding themselves accountable it's the same way we set aside an hour for 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 work or to get up or whatever we got to set the same time set set that aside i'm gonna talk to my son i'm gonna i'm gonna minister to my daughter i'm gonna let her know that she's beautiful i'm gonna let her know that she don't have to uh, uh settle for this or, or settle for that because when you know good you won't settle for bad when daddy done showed you what a good man is when you see a bad one you know uh -uh, he ain't it but see the problem is many of us have not seen and experienced what is good and so when something bad comes we settle because we think that that's the only thing but anyway the scripture just goes on to say submit to one another out of respect and honor for christ in marriage and so what i'm trying to tell you is that focus will help you see that marriage will never be 50 50. it's going to be a hundred hundred deal every day every time and so when he don't bring a hundred or she don't give a hundred. I still got a word that God honors marriage. I still got a word that the Lord says that it is the woman that sanctified her husband. She sets him apart. I still got a word that it's the woman that makes her husband be known in the gate. I still got a word y'all. And so because I got a word, even if he don't bring a hundred, I ain't withholding my hundred because see my hundred withhold with me withholding is not accountable to him. I'm accountable to God. And so because I'm accountable to God and my children are watching, they're watching what I'm saying. They're watching what I'm doing. They're watching how I'm acting. They're watching what goes on. And so once so many schizophrenic people in the body and so our kids will go confused because they hear mama saying one thing at the altar but they stay here cussing him out at home they hear daddy saying praise the lord on the organ but here it is when he's home he don't treat nobody right and so what i'm saying is that because we are got out of focus because we strayed away for what we know is right our children have grown confused mm. but i came tonight to tell you and I gotta tell you this is that I and I, and I and I'm preaching tonight. I know it, but your your family can overcome any hurdle that they may face right now. It ain't over. It's not over. The Lord says, "I am refocusing your attention. I am refocusing your attention. If you came on this live tonight, it's because God is redirecting you. He's refocusing you. And I don't care if your children are five or 55. It ain't over. God is saying, I'm about to do a new thing in you and for you. And some of you have a strange relationships with your children because of things that happen in their lives. But even then, they may not call you like they used to. They may not tell you that they love. You. But I even hear the Lord said, in that, I'm resyncing some things. I'm, 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 I'm redirecting. I'm refocusing things that you say. He said, I'll, I'll restore the years that the locusts and the canker worms have stolen from you. I'll bring it back. And so I found in my own life, y'all, you can't direct the ways of life, but you can choose where you direct your focus. So I can't choose how everybody going to act. I can't choose what my children are going to do and what they're not going to do. But one thing I can choose is how, where, and how I'm going to direct my focus. And I choose to direct my focus on what God promised me. And somebody needs to know this, is that if God promised that he's going to save you and your whole household. That's a promise. And so you can hold on to that in the midst of it all. 
in the midst of whatever may look that it may look like or that it feels like. But God promised me this. And so my focus is on the promise, not on what they did or what they said. And so I cannot direct the waves. I'm in the boat and I can't choose where the waves going to come and where they're going to go. But I'm driving this boat. <laughs> and I'm focused on where I'm steering this boat. Because this boat is the only thing that I got control over. What's the boat? The boat is my family. And so I cannot control when it's going to rain and when the sun is going to shine and, and how high the water is going to rise. But one thing I got control of is this boat. And I'm driving this boat. And I'm choosing how I'm going to handle whatever hurdle that we may face. And so the ways of life comes. But you got to choose to trust and depend on God. My hope, my future, my rest is in Jesus, not in the craziness that goes on in this world. And so what I found out is that when you focus, it keeps your faith. How is that? How does focus help me to keep faith? Well, I believe that for me, I believe because I feed my faith by staying focused on what the Lord has promised me. I stay focused on what God has said. And so because of that, because of that, I trust God to be who he said he'd be. So as we're going on, I, I need you all to put something in the chat for me. And so I'm talking about the promises of God. But if you don't know what God promised you, you're going to be a little stuck. But I, but I want, if you know what God promised you and you know what God said, I want you to put in the chat, God promised me. And I want, as you put in the chat, God promised me. I want you to put it in the chat because I want to see what you're holding on to. I want to see what you're standing on. Because I said to myself the other day, I was tired and I said, God, you promised to strengthen me. Lord, you promised that when I was weary that you would give me rest. And when times got tight and tough, Lord, you said you'll, you'll meet every need. And I know that you, you answer prayer. And so tonight I want you to prophetically speak or to share the promises of God. But I want you to put in the chat, what do you believe in God to do as I'm focused on God? I'm believing God. Bishop said he has a question. Go ahead, Bishop. Take me. Well, here's my question, Pastor Niles. Can you see me? And if you can see me, I'm as on Bishop with is putting his, his question. Can can y'all hear me? Circle back around when he Okay. When he I gets didn't know. he probably types real slow. Is he coming on? I was on. I'm on. Can you hear me? You're muted. Oh, I'm muted? Okay, that's what it is. Let's find my mute button. All right, let's. Go ahead. I'm unmuted. Which one am I? Am I muted? Uh, Cliff, am I muted? Text me. Let me know. If I'm muted, I, you can't hear me. I did have a question, but you couldn't hear me then because I guess I'm muted. Um, okay, let's see what's happening. You, oh, you're good. Okay, I'm good. Well, here's what I wanted to say in my question. As I was hearing you talk about this focus, it was perfect, and you were dealing with the children. And a thought came to me, and I was sitting here, and a thought came to me. What can we do in this season of the pandemic to reach our children right now? How can we focus? Because guess what? If Children are not coming to church. That's where they were getting their only word at one time. Are they going to get it at home? Meaning it's off the pastors now. We have no responsibility for somebody else's children who are at home. So what can we do in our homes to focus on our children and reach our children? You have a thought. 
So you um so I wanna I wanna also ask those that that um that's in the then the chat to help me with this, but I do believe some of the things that we are are well, are you saying when you say we can do as parents or we can do as church? Well, I'm going back, I'm going back to the parents now. Okay. Put it like this during the pandemic, let's just say even the worst of the pandemic, we didn't see no children, no more children's church. And God began to deal with me. He said, These will be children in the next years to come who will not know me, who will not know God, and who will oh. not know the church. And he said, because, okay, the parents said, okay, I'm staying home. I'm going to keep my family here. And the children didn't come. There was no more children's church. There was no more, and, and all places, not us, but all over. Children have been forsaken during this hour. But what can we do to focus on the children? Uh, let me give you one scripture, and then you could tell me if I'm, if I'm in somewhere. Deuteronomy chapter six, verse seven. This is what God said concerning us, whether we're in a building church or not. He said, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest down in our house. And when thou walkest by the way. And when thou liest down and when thou rises up. So I thought about it, you know, there was a time in my life where for some reason, me and my family didn't get planted in a good church. And what we did was at home, we had Bible study night where it was just us. And I would bring down Crystal, Dwayne, Donnell, and we'd all talk, Tanisha. And we talk amongst us in the word of God and we shared the word to our children. And they started getting more fired up because we're, we've got a generation coming. I'm talking about in the United States of America, especially that where children are not hearing the story of Moses, not hearing the story of Joshua. And they're, they're into school, they're doing whatever, they're progressing in a lot of other areas, but there's no focus on getting them to learn about how to pray, why to pray, what should we pray? And I believe, I just believe, that regardless of what happens, if we stay out of the church or not, we're going to have to get the church into our children. That's my opinion. Agree wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly. Um, and we do have some comments in the chat. I agree. I I believe that, as you said, when we, as you went to Deuteronomy, I went there too. And um, I was reading, I know you were in the King James Version. Um but I, I was uh, verse seven um, in the, I believe it was the um, the amplified um, verse. I wanted to read it, but it said, impress upon your children. Um, and it says, as you walking along the road, talk to your children about, about God. Um, and when you're in the house, um, when you lie down, when you rise up and, um, you know, the focus has been on everything else except the word of God, you know, um, I, you know, my grandson's four, he can get to every, every, he can handle the TV to whatever he can do it better than me and games and, and, and all this stuff. But I do believe, like you say, it has a start in the home it has to and like you said it we're not at church um so i mean i learned even in growing up church was boring but i i left knowing some hymns i left knowing a few scriptures i left knowing because even though maybe i didn't understand what the pastor said all the time but in sunday school i i walked away with something and so i do believe that um I, but it scared me when you said a generation that won't know god that won't know church now you said something earlier. You said strange, and I would just wrote down strange. It's, it's going to be a strange church, meaning this. Our Bible studies are not Bible studies for children. And if there was a time when we did have children's church or Sunday school, that has been gone in almost places. 
You can say, well, they're doing it over here, they're doing it over here, but it's gone in a lot of places. The children have suffered and they come to church and it's strange to them now. Worship is strange. Laying hands on people is strange. Speaking in unknown tongues is strange. Church is becoming strange because they're not familiar of being in the presence where we kept them there. When I was younger, I mean, when I was young, we kept our children in church through the night, through everything. And maybe we over dragged them, but we dragged them. <laughs> you know. And the Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart. And I'm really been concerned in the last years, what is happening with our children? How much do they know about God? How much do they really know about the Lord when they were once on fire? They're children of a strange God. That's what I want to say. Wow. Wow. We we um, had um, Stephanie Valentine said at home, you can be the light that they need and live upright because your children are watching you. Um, mm -hmm. Elder Ross said we have to save the upcoming generation. Um, and um, let me see if I see any others, but, and then some, some people, thank y'all for an elder. I said, I always speak to them about the word Jesus taught in parables and we can too give them the word and something to think about. And I believe that's so, so important. And also Bishop, as I was thinking about, you know, focus, um, so many times people are focused on, it's quick to focus on a lot of times what the church ain't doing. That's what people will say. But at the same time, when you read Deuteronomy, it didn't say the church. Mm. It said the parent. So sometimes parents will throw the stone at the church, but our focus needs to be on what we're doing at home. I believe that the, the church should only be reinforcement of what's already been taught. The church shouldn't be the first time that they heard it. It should have been heard at home. And then we just come and reinforce what mom and dad has already taught. Now it's like, I've heard it. They say, you hear some three times, you'll remember. So it's like, you know, mama said it, daddy said it. Now Bishop said it. I got it. It's been the three times. And so, and so that's what, you know, that's what I'll say. And, you know, and just um, having, having this generation and, and being able to, to, to pray and, 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 Tarita Jones said her children are grown, but she still called and talked to them about the word. And that and that is the key. Um, and I'm so glad you guys shared your promises also in the chat, because when, you know, as Bishop was saying, when 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 our children or we have adult children, they may have children and they may be our grandchildren when they're out of focus, or out of sync. You got your promise that you can hold on to. And I was just thinking about how focus is, is that selective attention. There's a lot going on, but I choose to focus on this. And choosing what I'm going to give my attention to. And I believe as a mom and as a wife that I got to be focused on what I choose to give my energy to. Because I set the tone, the climate for my house. And so because I set the tone and climate for my house, I have to be very careful what I'm saying and how I'm acting to certain things. And so, um, but what are we allowing to break our focus? And the key thing is the enemy's job is to kill, steal, and destroy. It ain't changed. His job description hasn't changed, won't change. It's the same description 24-7 every day, all day. And so, but the enemy wants you to lose focus because as long as Peter looked to Jesus, he walked on the water. And if you look to Jesus, you can handle whatever is put before you. Whatever your children go through, you can handle it. Whatever your, your, your family, your job, whatever. My faith is in him. My, my, my focus is on him. And he got to come through with his word. And I found in my, myself, if I don't keep my eyes on Jesus, I can't handle a storm. I can't handle, I can't handle, but long as I'm focused on him, I can handle whatever 
comes my way. And so we, we're about to bring this to a close, but when you're in a storm, I'm going to talk to somebody that's in a storm right now. Let's, let's use our imagination. We're in a storm and the wind is blowing. Mm -hmm. We got our umbrella and we're trying to run to our vehicle and there's a storm. And so there's a different mm -hmm. way that you act when you're in a storm versus when the sun is shining. So I'm leaving work and I'm leaving work today and the sun is shining. So I'm walking out with my principal. We're talking. We say bye. I'll see you in the morning. And we we go to our cars. But when, when, when there's a storm and it's raining, you got your umbrella, you're going. And sometimes the, the wind will blow up the umbrella. But when you're in a storm, you move different. Your, your pace is different. How you how you react and what um, the way you walk or the way you go to your car may be different. You're looking for covered areas. Mm -hmm. But but what I want to say is that when you act different, and some of us are going through day to day activities like it's you're not in a storm. And see, when you're in a storm, you cannot handle your storm like you would do a regular day, because when you're in a storm, you got to prepare yourself. When you're in a storm, you got to fortify yourself. You got to position yourself. And so what I'm telling you is that when and you may say, well, well, I don't understand. It's like, it's just like I said, if, it's, if the sun is shining, I'm not in a rush to get to my car. I'm walking and I'm getting there. But when I'm in a storm, I got my umbrella. I'm trying to hold my bag. And so I'm, I'm, I'm moving different. I'm acting different. I'm handling what I'm carrying different. And so some of us, when you're in a storm, you're trying to act like you in a day to day. No, 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 no. When I'm in a storm, when my marriage is in a storm, my day to day strategy has got to change. I may have to journal what I'm thinking in my head because it can't come out of my mouth. When I'm in a storm, I may have to get up 30 minutes earlier to go in the bathroom just to pray, to position myself for what he might say or how he may act or whatever. When you're in a storm, you may have to go the extra mile with your spouse, even when it ain't your fault. And see, some of us are still acting like everything's good and everything's cool, but your marriage is going through a storm. And so you got to re refocus. You got to resync. You got to reposition. And so you cannot act like Everything is good. And so there's a, I, I just move different. You act different when the wind is blowing. You act different when the rain is coming down. You act different when there, when, a, when, when a boat of lightning hits through the sky. It's just, and so some of us got to realize that we're under pressure and we're in a storm. And when you're under pressure, you got to pray different. Prayer gives you the power to endure the winds, the, 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 the blows, the storm, the thunder, the roaring lightning, the, the prayer gives me what I need to get to safety, to get to where I need to be. And so I, as, I, as I'm bringing this to a close, I begin to think about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He had to be focused. He asked the disciples to help him to pray. But after he got focused on the will of the one who sent him, the one who called him, the one who positioned him, what he was sending the earth to do, he got up saying, not my will, but let let thy will be done. See, that's what happens when you realize when you're in a storm and you refocus your mind and you begin to put your eyes back on God. You begin to put your eyes back on the main thing and you're keeping it the main thing. And then, 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 then things begin to come and sink because I know why I'm here. I know what I've been called to do. I know who my enemy is. I know what he's trying to do. And so my faith unleashes the supernatural. <laughs> they said it wasn't so. They looked at my children and they said, uh-uh. And my children may be going through something right now and something that that, that they're older and they're grown and they may have been been been, been stuck or, or punched or, or, or sucker punched or jabbed or whatever. And some things may have happened because there were some things I didn't know and I did some things that may have wasn't right. But I serve a God that's supernatural. I serve a God that heals all broken places. I serve a God that will cause water to gush in dry areas. I serve a God that will change minds. I serve a God that will heal in every capacity and so just like with peter peter experienced the, the the walking on water god is saying if you just trust me i will cause you to walk out a situation that'll make people look like it's crazy situation people looking like it ain't possible just like they thought it wasn't possible to walk on water god said i will cause you to walk out of situations and people will be looking like how People be looking like why people be looking like when, because the God that I serve, because my prayer life 
unleashes the supernatural because of my focus, because I'm focused on my children now, because I'm focused on my husband now, because I'm focused on the thing. First, I'm focused on the things of God and the things of God will, will align because I'm aligned with him. It will cause my family to be aligned. It will cause me to know what train a child the way that he shall go. And when he's older, he shall not depart. And so the training only comes from God. And he said, and Bishop taught me this is according to their own individual being, their own individual gift. But if you're not connected with God, you won't realize the purpose in your child. And so how are you going to train them if, you don't, if you're not connected with the one that created and made them and gave them to you? So when I connect with God, I realize why they're here. I realize what God has called for them in their lives. And I begin to speak to those things. And so many times we, we're speaking to the, the natural things and we're speaking to, you know, they're going to do this and they're going to be, but no, 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 God is calling us to speak to that godly thing. If you begin to speak to the man of God, the woman of God, the the the, the queen that she is, the, the, the princess that she is, the prince that he is, you begin to speak the power of God over those things. The engineer, the doctor, the lawyer, the nurses, and all those things will come, but they're going to come out of the godly things that you have planted. And so I'm closing with this. I thank God for showing me that even as he saved Peter from drowning, God is saving me. God is saving you. God is saving your children. And if you're on here tonight and you said, I've just gotten away and I know I miss God with some areas in my children, it ain't too late. And tonight we're going to pray. Even if they're grown, we're going to pray. God's going to restore the years that the locusts and the canker worm has stolen. They will rise into their identity. They will become who God promised you that they would be. I'm going to pray and then Deacon Cliff has some other information to share. But Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you tonight for all those that have come on. I thank you, Lord God for supernatural manifestation of your spirit right in their homes, in their living rooms, in their bedrooms, in their cars, wherever they may be. Father, I thank you for touching them and touching their children. I thank you for healing their marriage. I thank you for setting the captives free in their mind. I thank you, Lord God, that even on this month that focusing on the family, families will be blessed, lives will be changed. This is a deal changer. Lord, I thank you that things, deals that we made with people for stuff, mm -mm, just no, breaking off, cutting off some things and people because the will of God I must do. My children will not pay for this. I will serve God and they will live upright in and through him. Mm -hmm. So father, I pray for every father to be strengthened, that they will speak life and to their sons that their sons will bring them joy. Mm -hmm. Father, I thank you that every father would not nurture and cultivate his daughter, that she will see the beauty inside of her, regardless of what others say. She will know that I'm beautiful in every way, in every sense. Father, I pray for every mother that may be struggling and doing this thing alone. Father, I pray that you strengthen her in her mind and as she works all day and, and cook and clean and whatever it is. Father, I pray that she finds joy for the joy of the Lord is her strength. And Father God, as she, Lord God, experienced the joy of the Lord, Father God, she will become focused on what you have called and given her. Father, I thank you that every need is met and that there is no lack. I pray for every child, every grandchild. Father, they will rise up into their true identity. Father God, they will hear the voice of God and a stranger they will not entertain. Father, I thank you that they will not be lured into the things of this world, but they will serve you in spirit and in truth. Father, I thank you that they will know that God loves them. And because he loves them, he sent Jesus. And because Jesus died, Lord God, every sin, Lord God, is washed and cleansed. And no matter where they are on this road, Lord God, they can come back to you. So, Father, we thank you tonight. And we give you glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. I thank you all tonight for joining us. I pray that the word was a blessing. Again, I'm Pastor Teresa Niles, The Church Teaching Center. I'm on with our very own Bishop, Bishop Dwayne Green. Bishop may have a final thought. 
And then I think uh, Deacon Cliff has a video to share. And I want to, but I want again at the end, I said it at the beginning, we're at 1414 Avenue. We're there noon um, every Sunday. Um, and you're welcome to join us. I, I pray that um, the spirit of God would touch our homes and bring back the desire to be in the home and the house of God or around the saints of God. I really believe that now I've really heard from God tonight. I really believe the pandemic was to destroy your children and the future of the family. Mm. Adults felt like they're okay. But how many adults brought their children to this Bible study tonight? How many adults, when we had Sunday morning services, gathered their children around and said, children, look at what's going on. They're singing to the Lord and worshiping. It was not so. I'm telling you, it was not so. And there was a time when my children and my grandchildren would say, I can't wait to get to church. I, and then they would imitate some of us preachers and some of the singers. And they don't have anybody to imitate anymore. Matter of fact, it'll probably get so much like this if you ask them to go to church. I don't want to go. That lets you know that it has hit your place, hit your home. When your children start saying, I don't want to go, they have no desire for the house of God. That's all I want to say is good teaching tonight. Let's get it in our homes. Let's get it back. Let's start at home. Let's have study with our children at home. Let's tell them about the Lord. Let's tell them what importance of prayer. Let's tell them who Abraham was. Let's tell them what Jesus is doing. Get your family back into the house of God. Not to, doesn't have to be the physical house, but get them back in God. Amen. Amen. So, amen. Amen. Well, you guys be blessed. And um, uh, again, Bishop also does a noon day word. Um, so I'm telling you, the word is there. Um, Bishop do, has oh, words from heaven. I do a every morning word. Yes. For those of y'all who don't know, I've been doing this for 22 years. And I was teaching awesomely this morning. And I'll be teaching awesome tomorrow. And you're missing some great stuff. I'll amen. be teaching at 9 o'clock tonight. You're missing some great stuff. If you ain't there, if you ain't heard me teach in the morning, if you ain't heard Pastor Niles teach in the morning, if you ain't heard, oh man, we got so much going on. You're right. There's a lot going on. But we are committed to the will of God and to the word of God. I'll be on at nine o'clock. Now, Pastor Niles, if you want to teach at nine, you are welcome. Amen. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Deacon Cliff. Stay connected with us. Text the words TCTC to 77948.